Hello and welcome to another video. So the reason you had to take pre-calculus is so that you can tell what shape this curve is going to be and what to do with a function like this. Now, if you don't know what to do, maybe you need to go back and check your pre-calculus because right now we're not here to learn pre-calculus. We want to know how to use cylindrical shells to find the volume of solid of revolution. So, but I'm still going to do a little um, recap of what you should have known before this stage. So if you're given this, you have to know that this is a parabola that opens to the right because what is squared is y. So you don't have a parabola facing up. It is facing um, the x direction because this is the single guy. Okay. Remember when y was the single guy, you used to have a parabola facing up because y was the single guy. Now, x is the single guy, so the parabola will be sideways. You just want to know what position the parabola is going to be um, on the y-axis um, and what will be the middle of it, which you call the vertex line. Um, those are the things you want to know before you get into this. So let me show you how to find that. So the first thing you want to do is rewrite this this way. y minus 6 squared will be equal to x minus 4. On the basis of this, you could tell that this y is going to start at the point y equals 6 and at the point x equals 4. So that's your vertex. So we can conclude that the vertex is the point where x is 4 and y is 6. That's the most important thing. So now this is the point where y is 6 and this is the point where x is 4. So you have a curve that goes this way. And remember, I said it's going to open this way. So um, you may not need to do anything other than just imagine that you have a parabola that's going to open this way, but it is stopped by the line x equals 13. So this line x equals 13 is what tells you the end of the parabola. So what is this point? What is this point? Well, it's basically what y will be when x equals 13. See, x is 13 twice. So you want to go back and just solve this equation, plugging 13 in here and seeing what y is going to be. So here we have y minus 6 squared equals x minus 4. And remember, we're saying x equals 13 is where you're going to stop it. So we have y minus 6 squared equals 13 minus 4 and that gives you 9. Okay, so we're saying that y minus 6 will be equal to plus or minus the square root of 9, which will give us y minus 6, or y will be equal, let's just do this, y will be equal to 6 plus or minus 3. So we say y will be equal to 6 plus 9, or I mean 6 plus 3, or 6 minus 3, which is going to be 3 or 9. Those are the two possible options that you have for y. So the points of intersection, okay, points of intersection will be the point where x equals 13 and y equals 3. So that's one point, 3, 13, 3, and another point, 13, 9. So we can actually plot that. Where is x equals 13? We could do 13 around here. So just take a line. Okay, and then this curve is going to go to the point 3. The point 3 is somewhere here. I'm going to mark this point. And the point 9 is somewhere here. I'm going to mark here. So I can just sketch it. That's it. So this is all you need to do. You just need to reproduce this because remember, we are rotating this region about the line, um, the x-axis, which is line y equals zero. So I can reproduce this somewhere here and here, negative nine, and the point six. I'm just gonna bring this here to the point negative six plus same four, and then just make this. Okay, that's it.
So now we just need to rotate, create our volume, and life is gonna be just sweet. Okay, so at this point, let's say this revolves this way, rotate, and this also goes this way, beautiful, and then we have this, and then this goes this way. You see, we have created our volume, and that's the solid of revolution that we have generated. I'm just gonna make this prettier so you can see the actual volume, okay. Okay, that's it. So now the next thing you wanna do is to assume that what you have here are just cylindrical shells. Stack them with cylinders. Don't forget, cylinders. So I'm going to make a cylinder right here in the middle. Watch this, okay? It has a thickness that goes this way, but it's a cylinder. Ooh, that's beautiful, okay? So, you got a cylinder. And there are many of them with the radius that goes from the center, okay? So this radius goes from here all the way to the side. Okay, let's make this better. Too curved. Okay. Mm. Okay, so basically you have several cylinders lined up, lined up like that. This is one of them. And you just need to find the volume of the cylinder and then you integrate because the thickness of the cylinder is building this way. You can see that's your thickness. As you can see, it's getting thicker as I go along the y-axis, as I keep going down. So that's your dy. That's how you figure out what to do. That's how you figure out the bounds. Okay, so now... This is something you have to know before you attempt using the cylindrical shells method, okay? Because you know that you're gonna be having your circumference multiplied by height, multiplied by thickness. The first thing you wanna decide is, what is the thickness? Is it getting thicker along the Y or getting thicker along the X? The way you see it is getting thicker along the Y, so it's gonna be dy, okay? So, you write dy here. So, for the height, the height is going, let's do this. What is the circumference? It's 2 pi r. It's 2 pi r. What is the radius of the cylinder? The radius is the distance from the center to this point. And at any time, this point is always what you can read on the y-axis. So this is 2 pi y. Okay, that's the circumference. Instead of saying 2 pi r, we know r is going to be y. And what's the height? The height is always starting from here this is the beginning and this is the ending the height might get here as you keep integrating okay but at this point what is here well we don't know but whatever you get here is actually the x coordinate so this is the difference the distance from here to here is your height so you can say height is the gap from here to here which is basically remember this line is the line x equals 13 that was the line x equals 13, that's this line, which is this line. So it's x equals 13 minus whatever you have here. Well, what you have here is gonna be changing depending on what x is, okay? Depending on the value of x. So this is gonna be 13 minus x. Now, this is the most difficult part of this. If you get this, you're 100% certain that you're gonna get this right, unless you make a mistake in your computation or your integration. So at this point, this is, this is it. Look at the cylinder, decide the radius, it is y. Decide the height. The height is usually x unless there's something else that is not zero. See, if this line was line zero, you just say it's whatever that is. But at this point, is the distance from here to here is the height, which is basically x minus 13. I mean, x equals 13 minus x equals whatever x is, so it's gonna be 13 minus x, and that's it. Okay, so, now you just need to integrate. Let's clean this up, okay? If we clean this up, because we're integrating with respect to y, it's dy, okay? We're going to need to change this from x to make it be y. This is already good. We just wanna change x and replace it with something that is expressed in terms of y. So let's do that here. We're gonna do that 
right here at the bottom here. Okay, so this expression, the volume, is going to be equal to the integral. Now that we have decided that it's dy, our bounds will have to be decided. It's the original y bounds. So remember that the lower bound for this was 13.3. And the upper bound here, this point here was 13.9. So you know that the lower bound for y is 3 and the upper is 9. So we're going to write 3 and 9. Okay. If this was a, a dx integration, your bounds would have been the original x, which was, I think it was 4. Yes, absolutely. The original point was 4, and the ending point was x equals 13. So you'd have been doing integration from 4 to 13. But at this point, we're doing 3 to 9 because we're integrating with respect to y. That's, so the bounds are very important for you to get an accurate answer. So at this point, we have 3 to 9, and we have 2 pi y multiplied by 13 minus x, that's 13 minus, but we're not going to write x because we want to do dy, so x is 4 plus y minus 6 squared, so we have 4 plus y minus 6 squared, okay, um, no, minus 6 squared, like this, okay, then multiplied by dy. So basically that's what we have and this will imply that we have the integral from 3 to 9 of 2 pi y multiplied by, if we open this up, this is going to be 13 minus 4 plus y squared, let's put this in parentheses, y squared minus 12y plus 36, okay? Everything still do y. Okay, um, one more step. You have 3 to 9 and then I have 2 pi y multiplied by, um, Hey, don't forget, we're multiplying all of this. So this will now be 13 minus 4. Let's remove everything. 13 minus 4 minus y squared minus y squared plus 12y minus 36. Okay, everything do I. Okay, it looks like our calculation now can be completed. So I can go up here. Let's make this here. So what can we do? 13 minus 4 minus 36 is negative 27. Okay, so and I can take out the 2y. You know what? I'm just going to take out the 2 pi rather. So I have... This would be equal to the integral from 3 to 9. Okay. 3 to 9, I'm going to put 2 pi outside. So I have y here. So when I do this, 13 minus 4 minus 36 is negative 27 times y. That's negative 27y. Okay. And then I go to the other part. This is going to be y times negative y squared is negative y cubed, negative y cubed. And the final one is y times plus 12y. That's going to be plus 12y squared, plus 12y squared. Everything dy. Okay. So let's integrate. We're going to get 2 pi. And then the integral is going to be negative 27 over 2y squared minus um, 1 over 4y to the 4th plus 4y cubed. Integrate from 3 to 9. Well, I'm not going to spend time evaluating this. I'm just going to say that the volume will be equal to 2 pi times whatever you have in here when you evaluate it. And it's going to be 432 pi. Do this yourself, okay? Units cubed. So remember, the purpose of this video was to show you how to set this up and to be able to get this. And after that, the integration is your business.